So good morning and welcome to Ormskirk Parish Church for what we hope is our last pre-recorded service for next week we are reopening and we're getting the church all nice and ready to reopen and welcome people back in for public worship and we're doing that at Leyden Park Chapel. My name is Stuart, one of the clergy here. I'll be joined today by Pauline who's doing the prayers, Lynn who will be preaching and Denise Burke from our congregation who will be reading our Bible reading. Please look at the notice sheet, look on the website, look on our Facebook page for details about how you can come along to worship with us safely. We have one service here at 10.30 in Ormskirk and we have one service in Latham. All the details on the notice sheet but you do need to book. We are committed to keeping everybody safe as we welcome people back into worship. It will feel a little bit different, we know that, but God is here God is with us and God will be worshipping with us on next Sunday, the 27th of September, when we reopen. So that will be really good to be part of. As we start our service this morning, let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for being with us through thick and thin guiding us on our journey through life. Support us in all that we do. Be with us as we worship you today and open our hearts and our minds to hear your love today and forever. Amen. So having prepared our hearts and minds for worship, we open our Bible reading and Denise will bring us the Gospel reading for today. Today's reading is taken from Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he when he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired, about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only an hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give them this last, the same as I give to you. I am not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me. Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Denise. Now we hand over to Lynn who will bring us our sermon this morning. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I suspect many of us would sympathise with the workers here who toiled all day to realise that those who had done virtually no work, and certainly less than them, were being equally rewarded. It's not fair, the cry would go. Today there might have been an industrial dispute. Our negotiations continued to set the hourly rate. But we need to look at this parable in its context. 
In Matthew's Gospel, it's recorded as coming just after the encounter with the rich young man, wondering how he was going to inherit eternal life. And then it follows with Jesus' final journey into Jerusalem. And if you've been reading through the previous chapters, Jesus has been questioned many times on how to get into heaven, who might get in there, and what it was going to be like. If you remember, Jesus' response to the young man was to give all his riches away and follow him. But the young man declined. He turned away. He wanted to hang on to all his possessions. Then Jesus said, it's going to be more difficult for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter eternal life. The disciples then said, well, who can inherit eternal life? And Peter, ever bold, can't keep quiet. Hang on, he said. We've given up everything, left everything behind to follow you. So what's in it for us? What is our reward? Then Jesus, answering Peter, told this parable. It's almost the last of his great big teachings, trying to explain that God's ways are not the same as human ways of working. So here, the landowner has a great harvest to gather in. He hires men. He agrees the daily rate for them. Then it becomes a problem. The harvest is vast. He needs more workers. He continues to employ workers right through the day until the end of the day. But the fact that he needed more and more workers indicates how great the potential for the harvest was. The landowner did not want the harvest to go to waste. And then another problem arises. At pay time, the workers hired last were paid first, and they received a full day's pay, and so on through the day. And those who had worked all day came to be paid, they'd seen what the others had been paid. And they assumed they would get more. But as we know, they didn't. It was then that the grumbling started. Again, it's not fair. You have treated everybody equally. But the landowner confronts the complaining workers head on. I haven't done you any wrong, he said. It is fair. You knew what you were signing up for. You have received what we have agreed upon. And then he dismisses them. Take your pay, your reward, and be on your way. I'm not even going to discuss it with you. I can do whatever I want with my money. I can give it away if I want, to whomever I want. He sent them away with the flea in their ear because he knew that their true motivation about complaining wasn't a desire for justice, or equal pay, because it was their own envy of those who had done less than them were proportionally receiving more than they had. But if you remember from our reading, only those hired first thing in the morning had negotiated and agreed a pay deal. Nothing was said to the other workers who were hired throughout the day, other than the landowner said, I will give you what is right, I will treat you fairly. So this parable is not about equal pay and just rewards. It's a parable, once again, about God's grace. How everyone is treated equally and rightly by God. This parable breaks the human logic. Those thoughts in our head that connect work and reward. And our ideas of what is right and wrong. But God's judgment of people's worth is totally different to our perception of people and their situations. Peter and the disciples and the inner circle of Jesus' followers assume that they may be first in the queue for heaven. But Jesus is saying to them here, those lurking at the margins, those who other people think are not worthy, are worthy in my sight and I will treat them equally. So Peter's question about the rewards expected by those who've given up everything to follow Jesus and those who came much later, having been perceived as having given less, fails to understand. This is about God's gifts, God's gifts and rewards are given, not because they are earned, because God is gracious. Grace is not given in the way humans might expect it. And 
here and Jesus said many times, those who are first will be last and the last will be first. All are recipients of God's grace. This is a God who accepts people, no matter what they've done, no matter what situation they find themselves in, whether they're part of an inner circle or at the margins. The bounty of God's grace is for everyone. God's kingdom is not about being the greatest or the richest or even the favorites. This is about being of service to other people, working to bring in the harvest. And in today's world, the harvest is plentiful. The harvest field is fast. Plenty of workers are needed to share God's grace and love to everyone we encounter. A love which goes way beyond human understanding or logic. Amen. Thank you, Lim, for those inspiring and encouraging words. And now we move to an aspect of prayer as Pauline leads us in prayer this morning. Let us pray. We pray for Christians in areas where they are oppressed, for those who face cynicism at work or at home, for all who are afraid to confess their faith. Remember those seeking to spread the gospel in non-Christian areas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all employers with a spirit of fairness and grace. Remember all who have to queue for work, all who depend on social security, all who are furloughed. We pray for all who are without work, for those on low incomes, for those who cannot get work through prejudice or protection rackets. May all who prosper be generous and willing to share with the needy. We pray for all relief organisations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our own work, our leisure, our homes. We pray for all who supply us with the things we need. We remember homes where families go hungry, those who are in great debt, those who've had their homes repossessed. We pray for young people leaving home at this time, for those who fear the empty nest, for young people who feel homesick, for children starting their secondary school or their primary school. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are unable to work through disability. We pray for all who are handicapped, for all who are permanently on sickness benefit, for the chronically ill, for those who cannot do paid work, for looking after a loved one who is ill. Remember those known to us who are ill at this time, in pain, awaiting surgery or investigations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have been faithful labourers in your harvest. Lord, may we with them rejoice in your love and generosity in your everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, teach us to live in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, that does not be intimidated by opposition or criticism. Keep us firm in the faith you have set before us, through Christ who has triumphed and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, Forever and ever. Amen. And with disciples across the Diocese of Liverpool and across the world, we join together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Pauline, for our prayers this morning. So we've got to the end of another season in our journey with God. Next week we hope that these pews will contain people coming back to worship and as I said at the beginning of this service, do look at the notice sheet on the website or on Facebook for details about how you can book in and be part of this service here in Ormskirk at 10.30 or at Latham um, on Sunday morning as we reopen for worship. We hope you've enjoyed being part of these online services. Um, we're going to give them a break as we move back into um, church. Um, and we hope that the situation will be that we can continue to grow um, as our congregations together, um, bringing more people and new people into the love of God. But if you can't join us, we will still continue to pray for you as we pray for this town, this community, for the people that we know and love. And so we end this morning with our blessing, knowing that wherever we're watching from, God is with us. God sits beside us and God carries us in his loving and gentle arms. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen.